I'm Bearded and Bored. Welcome back for part two of the corn malting series. In this segment, we'll go through the drying process so you can get your corn ready for grinding or storage. Yes, I am Bearded and Bored. Make it so, number one. I just said, yes, man, so if you watched the last video, you saw the time lapse at the end where everything was sprouting and putting out little rootlets and everything. One piece of advice I want to give, if you're going to do more than four pounds, I would say, of any grain, I would do it in two trays. Um, six pounds was a little bit too much. It was really, really deep and really hard to turn it. And so consequently, overnight, it ended up building up a lot of heat. And that's the thing about germination, when you have a whole ton of stuff sprouting and growing like that, it's gonna generate its own heat if you're not constantly rotating it and aerating it and making sure that it can't build up all that heat. The problem with that is that heat and moisture is a perfect environment for bacterial growth and mold growth. Two things that will totally shut this whole process right down. If you're ever malting anything um, and you get mold growth or you get um, bacterial growth, like something slimy, stinky, gross looking, moldy looking, toss it. Don't try to clean it off or anything like that because it's just going to carry a whole bunch of awful flavors through uh, no matter what you do to it. And if you're going to use it for making beer, th those flavors aren't going anywhere. Trust me, it uh, does not work out well. So if it spoils, just toss it and start again. That's why I say use two trays so that you have uh, less density and it's a lot easier to turn it and keep it aerated. Let me go into a little bit of detail here. As you can see here, some of these have sprouted really, really far, like this guy, that's too much. But the bulk of them have done stuff like this. You've got the root here, and then you've got the actual sprout, or the acrospire, right here. And this is about what you want to see. Now, if you're malting barley, uh, you're, you're looking for a different length in the acrospire. You want only about three quarters of the length of the grain. But with corn, you actually want to go a little bit further. I read a, an old research paper about it, where uh, if you let it go a little bit longer, you get more of the... Uh, amylase enzymes that we're looking for to help break things down, break down the uh, starches into sugars. Okay, so here's what I did. I need to, uh, the next thing we've got to do, we've got to stop the, um, the germination. And in order to do that, we're just going to dry it out. Basically, we're going to make it an unfavorable climate for the, uh, for the seeds to sprout. They're not going to be able to sprout anymore because we're going to dry the shit out of them really, really fast. I've got a couple of uh, spare window screens. I just put them on some boards, put them on some crates, and then I've got a box fan that I lifted off of the ground a little bit, and we're just going to air dry them over the next uh, 24 to 36 hours, and it'll actually go really, really well, and occasionally you want to come out and stir it around but that is about it. Once the corn uh, hits the dryness that I'm looking for, I'll show you the next step. All right, it's been 48 hours with the fan on underneath, and this is mostly dry. I've just come in about every 12 hours or so to turn the corn and move it around over the screen so that it all gets an even amount of air. and. We need to finish off the drying process, so we're going to take all this and shove it into a pillowcase. All right, so I'm uh, I'm ridiculously busy today, but I wanted to get some more information into the video, and I wasn't going to have time to film before I have to start editing. So um, my apologies for the driving vlog. So why did we put all of the grain, all the malted corn? into a pillowcase. Well, two reasons. We need to drive off as much moisture as possible because ultimately we want to be able to store that grain. 
and if you have too much residual moisture in there it's just going to rot so we don't want to do that um, two we've got all those little rootlets and uh, sprouts that are coming out of the grains and trying to get those off uh, off of the grain with anything other than a tumbler sort of approach is a huge pain in the ass. So we threw all the grain into a pillowcase and we're gonna tie a knot in that and we're gonna throw that into another pillowcase and tie a knot into that and toss it in the dryer and we're gonna do it on low for about two hours. So two different cycles, um, basically to, to pound the shit out of it and get all those rootlets to fall off and then also to help drive out any residual moisture that might still be in those grains. All of the enzymes that have formed inside those grains, the amylase enzymes, and there's several different ones, they're all very temperature sensitive and they all have different temperatures that they break down at. Meaning if you heat those grains up too much, the amylase enzymes are going to just be denatured and they'll they'll be basically rendered ineffective so you did all that work for nothing if you get your grains too hot it won't actually break down the starches so what we're gonna do is use the low temperature to heat those grains but just enough so that they don't get too hot so we keep our grains nice and our, our amylase enzymes intact inside of the malted grain and the tumbling, the friction between all those grains smashing together inside the dryer will uh, knock all those rootlets off. So once that's done, really all we have to do is strain it, you know, run it through a wire strainer to get all that stuff off and then we can store it and it'll be ready for grinding whenever we need it. So what I do is I actually take the uh, corn from the dryer and Back, you know winnow it out you know shake off all that chaff all the rootlets and everything and then bag it up as soon as possible while it's still just a tiny bit warm and what that lets me do is tomorrow I can come and take a look at the bags and if I see any moisture on the inside of the bag I know that it has to go back into the pillowcase and into the dryer for another hour because it's still got a little too much residual moisture you do not want to bag this stuff up when there's that much moisture. If there's enough to condense on the inside of the bag, even a little bit, that's enough for it to rot. And you don't want to have rotten grain because it's you just wasted a whole week of your time. And, you know, it's not, uh, not good. So, now we've got, now we've got all of our corn bagged up. And uh, always mark it so that you know how long it's been in there. All right, so that's the whole malting process wrapped up in a nice little bow. If you, uh, if you have any questions about malting, put them down in the comments section. If you got useful information out of this video, do me a favor and hit that like button, let everybody know. And if you want to follow along with uh, the other videos that I'm going to do, hit that subscribe button and then ring the bell so you can get notified whenever I post a new video. And I think... Um, Maybe in an upcoming video. I have some very strong feelings about distillation, home distillation for personal use being illegal in the United States. Um, I think it's, it's a really dumb law and I'd like to discuss it a little bit further. So if you want to know a little bit more about what I think and what the, the actual law is on home distillation in the United States, uh, post a comment because based on whether or not you guys want to hear about it um, we'll determine whether or not I'm actually going to do a video on it. I'll post some links down in the description for the Hobby Distillers Association and also for a buddy of mine over in New Zealand, Jesse, he's got the Stillet channel um, where it's legal for him to distill at home. He's in New Zealand, that's the law there. So uh, he's going through the whole process of, of teaching himself how to distill and make, you know, his ultimate goal is to make comparable, you know, commercial quality products. 
Um, so he actually is very dedicated to this and wants to do some really cool stuff. And quite frankly, I can't wait to see everything he's going to do. So swing over to his channel. I'll put a link for him down in the bottom in the description. And, um, you know, as always, thanks for watching. I sure do appreciate it. And like I said, leave those comments. Leave some comments. Let me know how you feel.